I am Dustin Abbott and I'm here to give you my review of the new Godox AD100 Pro uh, flash unit. This is from their Wistro line of flashes and it joins others like the AD300 and the AD200 as long, as long with the larger flashes that they have. And in some ways it gives you an interesting alternative to their more traditional uh, V1S flash or you know it doesn't have to be S, V1 flash I should, should say. It's a, this is an S because it's Sony TTL. One of the things that I love about the Wistro lineup is that it really works for the way that I like to use flashes. Namely, I, I'm not a person that likes to use an on-camera uh, flash. Uh, very, very, very rarely is an on-camera flash uh, flattering. And while it is obviously versatile, particularly if you're working solo, you know, it gives you freedom to move around and, you know, maybe to bounce off uh, various surfaces. But it's also quite inhibiting in a lot of ways and definitely doesn't give you your most flattering lighting. These flashes are really designed to get them off camera and then they're very easy to control with one of the variety of different uh, on-camera kind of master unit control units that you can add to your camera and have easy control either you know through just biasing TTL or just using them manually and um, either you know knowing your lighting ratios or if you're newer to strobing to experimenting until you get the look that you want. But they give you a lot of versatility, and so I, I this is I think it's great that what Godox is doing in that they are allowing for a variety of not only different price points but also in different sizes and outputs. So obviously the difference between the eighty one hundred and the eighty three hundred is radically different, and the. The truth is, is not everyone needs an 8300 um, unit. I mean, that is a lot of power, and in many cases, it's overpower for what people need. And so if your portrait style is more focused on um, either individuals, couples, small groups, a couple of 8100s are going to very likely do a fantastic job, particularly if you're trying to augment existing lighting and you're not trying to go for the extreme uh, dramatic. You know, a flash like this, I mean, you, it's very easy easy to, you know, overpower the sun, to light, you know, large groups, you know, various things like that. But as I said, for, for many people and many people's photography style, it's overkill. Now, Godox loves to label everything it makes pocketable. And, you know, as I said with the 8200, I don't know what your pockets are like, but I don't have too many pants where this is going to fit into. And the same is true for the uh, 100 here, although I will point out that it really is a quite a compact flash unit, particularly when you consider the fact that compared to the V1, which is quite a powerful flash unit, this has a, a, a rating of, I believe, around 76 watt second. This is a 100. It corresponds, of course, to the design, name designation under watt second power. And so you've got a significant amount of, of power. And so if you were to equate that to a guide number, if you're more familiar with that. I don't know what the exact equivalence would be, but I would suspect that you're talking about well over 60 um, as a guide number, which is a lot of power and a nice compact unit. Now, a few of the things that I like about this that's not exclusive to this particular flash, but to Godox's design. First and foremost, they have what are very often interchangeable battery packs, and so that if you own a few different um, of their flashes that you could uh, move across, you know, both of those, and so that you can kind of plug and play. But they uh, they can be charged, um, you know, within. They all come with with chargers. They charge fairly quickly. But what I find is that. If you're someone, you know, some people, they are, they're using their flashes like all the time. I am not. I, I shoot, you know, portraits. Um, I shoot weddings occasionally. And so what I found is that in a lot of my flashes where I would have, say, you know, d that ran off like double A's, I would find that by the time I went to shoot, I would always need to recharge my batteries because they would have, you know, trickled off and lost their charge. The battery packs in these Godox Unix really hold up particularly well. And so um, because I've, I've been using other and because of COVID and not shooting as many portraits. For example, I haven't shot this particular flash unit. It's been so long that I've almost forgotten where the power button is. But here it is. It's been sitting for, you know, well over a year. It's ready to go. Like, I mean, just like that, I haven't charged it. It's been sitting in its case. And so that's something that certainly is an admirable quality about these. 
So the battery pack in it is a 2600 mAh battery pack. It's rated up for 360 full power shots. For me, it's pretty rare that I'm actually shooting full power, so I get a lot more um, off of that. I tend to not do a lot of overpowering flashes. I like to more fill flash. And, and so as a byproduct of that, it, the batteries last me for a very long time. Um, obviously, these are TTL, and what I like about the, the TTL design of these is, for example, I, the portrait shoot that I'm mostly going to show you, show you photos from, I actually had two different bodies. I was testing a couple of different products, and so I had both a Sony body, and so I threw on this X-Pro S flash uh, you know, controller, and on a Canon body, I had the X. Uh, 2T uh, mounted on there. And so in both cases, I was able to control the flash, you know, perfectly from both without any kind of you know, switching around in between. And it, you know, can run off of both TTL systems without any problem. That's obviously very, very beneficial if you're someone who shoots multiple camera systems to where all you need to invest in, you know, if you've got a variety of flashes is just a, you know, relatively inexpensive control unit. And then you can control a variety of different flashes. So just pair it up to the camera system you have and away you go and all of these flashes I've got in front of me, I could uh, easily power from either of these or control from either one of these and uh, with a variety of different camera units. And so I find that to be really, really uh, useful. You have a maximum um, HSS or uh, high speed sync of up to one eight thousandth of a second, and so that gives you some flexibility there. Obviously, you also have the ability, you know, the, the actual sync is going to depend upon your individual camera. Up front, they have a magnetic system that allows you to attach accessories, or you can, um, you know, use an adapter that they sell. I think it's called the S2, and you can move to bow and mount type accessories. In this case, it's, you know, bow and mount accessories are a little bit large for such a small unit, but obviously if you've already got accessories there, you can continually to uh, utilize them. One of the other things that is nice about these Godox units like the, um, the AD100 here is that it does have a multi-level, I believe it's nine different levels of modeling light that can be remotely controlled from within the unit itself, or obviously you can control it on this um, unit itself and you can control the level and so it's it's powerful enough that you can use it you know in a pinch also for a video light now this obviously is designed to be a slave unit it is not uh, a, a kind of flash that you mount on uh, on your camera and use it as a potentially a master unit for uh, another camera so if you're looking for something like that the v1 is obviously going to be a better choice and obviously you can also control other units from the v1 itself but the wireless transmission here, I find it to be just, it just works seamlessly. It's not, once you get it set up, it just works. It works reliably. Um, you can work up to, I believe, 100 meters of range. Uh, you have the option of setting up different groups, different ratios, and it, they're just, they're very simple to use. And there's a reason why people really love these flash units. It's, and it's mostly because they offer you a very nice degree of build, a high level of reliability in terms of repeatable results, good quality of light, but at a uh, relatively inexpensive price, particularly compared to you know other competitors, and so I find that there are uh, there's a huge number of photographers that just don't see the need to move up to a more expensive flash unit when these Godox units just work so well, so reliably, and uh, you know to me are just they're they're a great joy to use out in the field and they produce very very good results and so in the case of you know this uh, sh shoot that I did here I just used the single unit I didn't use any kind of modifier not necessarily my favorite kind way to use a light but even in those more limited conditions I got really good results I was able to you know obviously tweak to what I wanted on the fly and I got a lot of really stunning results and most importantly I could position the light where it's going to do the most good. So even if I'm working with just a single light, I can actually position it where it's going to be flattering, where it's going to produce the kind of results that I want. So at the end of the day for around $300, so just a little bit less expensive than what the uh, V1 is. You've got a lot of flash and a, you know, a really compact package overall. And I'm going to just power this off for a second. And it, they come with the adapter so you can go to the top of a 
you know, a light pull like this, a lot of times, you know, so when you're talking about that, again, I, they call that pocketable. It's a pretty wide pocket, you know, in this circular flash unit. But, you know, whether it's pocketable or not, it is nice and uh, compact. And I really like um, with these adapters that, you know, put it on a you know, almost like a selfie stick kind of thing, or, you know, just something small, but even like just having an, an assistant hold it like this. A lot of times if I'm shooting a wedding, for example, and working with groups, I don't like to use light stands. I want to have that flexibility. So, um, I don't necessarily bring the assistants. I just kind of recruit them. And all you need to do is just get somebody to hold it in the position you want and away you go. And so uh, once again, I've, I've been really happy with all of these flash units, so much so that after I've tested them, I have added them to my own you know, collection and I have sent other flashes uh, packing away because I just don't need them. I really enjoy these. And I could really see myself using a you know two or three of these 8100 Pros and being perfectly happy with that. I will note that, you know, when shooting towards maximum pop, I did feel I could hear the flash really pop powering in a way that, you know, I almost never hear the 8300 because you're just hardly ever out near its limits. So certainly it does have lower limits compared to a larger flash unit like this. But again, buy for what you need. And if you don't need overpoweringly massive amounts of light, Spending your money on a couple of these rather than just one of these units makes a lot of sense because then you can light from multiple angles and you know maximize the way that you can direct and shape the light rather than just getting a lot of light out of one unit. Then again, your uses may be that you need multiple ones of the big dogs. Go for it. And at the end of the day, though, these are flash units that I'm really, really happy with. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, you can find linkage uh, there to an image gallery. You can check out these uh, portrait shots that I've shown and of uh, either a person or animal and, and check that out. Beyond that, there are some buying links there if you'd like to purchase one for yourself. And as always, there's linkage there to um, purchase my merchandise, channel merchandise. You can follow me on social media, become a patron, sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Be sure to ring that bell to get notification when new content drops. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and let the light in.